Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Daneshri. I am the customer consultant for Elsevier based in South Africa. Today, we're going to be doing a webinar on how engineering can help, <clears throat> a demonstration on remote learning and engineering searches, supporting health and safety systems. So just to start things off today, I just want to introduce you to the presenters. Um, as I explained, I'm the customer consultant for Elsevier. I generally deal with the product science to Scopus and Mendeley, and I'm based in South Africa. Our two presenters today will be Isaac Kudu, who is a Mendeley advisor based at the University of KwaZulu-Natal at the Westville campus in Durban, South Africa. He is an environmental and analytical chemistry researcher, and he'll be taking us through a brief introductory training on Mendeley today. Um, our other presenter today will be Ahmed Helmi, who is the Engineering and Geoscience Solution Sales Manager for Africa, and he will be doing the majority of the training on the engineering solutions today. So let's start with the knowledge cycle. To start things off, we'd like to demonstrate to you Elsevier and the knowledge cycle. So the knowledge cycle is a set of phases that researchers find themselves in when conducting their research. They either find themselves in the discovery phase, building up their reading or reference list, which is building their resources, author, citing, submit for peer review and publish, and getting cited. So when a researcher is in the discover phase, they're generally in the beginning phase of research itself. They're trying to establish a research area, a field that they want to research. So they have several questions that they may be asking themselves. They want to know what can be done, what has been done, what can be built upon, um, who are the relevant authors in this field, what research um, has been put out, has research in a particular field increased or decreased over time, uh, who is funding research, and all of these questions can be asked by the two recommend, answered by the two recommended um, products on your screen, which is Engineering Village and Scopus. Today's training is going to focus on Engineering Village. Engineering Village is the number one indexing tool for engineering and applied sciences, and it's designed specifically for engineers. It is a comprehensive database that contains the most authoritative engineering resources available today. Once you're past the discover phase, you would want to build your resources. So you would want to access content that can build upon your research question. Um, so for that, we recommend Science Direct, Novel, or Geofacets. For today's training, we're going to be focusing on Novel. Novel contains books from 150 publishers. It helps organizations increase productivity, improve education, minimize risk, and optimize business performance. We do have a recording of the training on geofacets, which will be shared with you as well during the course of this training today. When a researcher is ready to write and cite, the recommended pro product is Mendeley which is what Isaac will be presenting on today. Mendeley is a free academic and social network and a reference manager. So you do have access to it if you'd like to use it. And we're going to be doing a brief introductory training to this product today. And once you're done and you're ready to submit for peer review and publish, you want your ultimate goal is to get cited. So for that, you want to be indexed in Engineering Village to increase visibility of your research. And we'll be covering all of these topics in our training today. Another free resource that you have available to you is the Research Academy. The website is displayed on your screen now. It is researcheracademy.com. The Research Academy is a platform of resources that will take researchers through the publishing journey. It helps build your knowledge around publishing, the publishing process, 
how to navigate peer review, and hot topics like the ethics of publishing, finding the right journal to publish in, and navigating away from predatory journals. This platform contains several courses, which once you're completed, you will receive a certification for these courses. I stress that it's a free resource and you have available, which you have available to you today. You can access this resource <coughs> with your Science Direct or any Elsevier credentials that you have, you will be able to gain access to this resource. This resource is also where you will go to at the end of this presentation to download your certificate for attending this workshop. The code to download your certificate will be given to you by your presenter today, which is Ahmed Helmi. And I'm going to hand you over to him now to proceed with the engineering solutions training. Thank you very much, Danishree. This was a um, brilliant introduction uh, to Researcher Academy and to the knowledge cycle. We have, of course, a, a, a brilliant guest with us today, Isaac Kudo, uh, the, our Mendeley advisor. Thank you once again, Ahmad, for the introduction. And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to give you this brief introduction to the Mendeley software. And as stated earlier, I'm a Mendeley advisor at the Westville campus of the University of KwaZulu-Natal. But prior to that, I've been in research for about eight years as an environmental researcher, um, originally from Ghana. And so I used Mendeley for about three years now, and I quite uh, like the product. So I just want to give you a brief introduction about Mendeley. So today in my presentation, I'm going to tackle about three things. First, we are going to look at what Mendeley is. Then we'll look at using Mendeley as a reference manager. And we'll also look at Mendeley as a social network. Then I'll just finish up with uh, some personal favorites of mine. Mendeley is a free reference manager that helps you to organize your resources, insert your citations, and compile your bibliography when you're writing up your research. Apart from using it as a reference manager, you also have these extra features. Uh, you can see that it is a cross-platform that is, you can use it on a Windows, on a Mac, or Linux, or any mobile device. Mendeley also can be used as a social network, a data repository, a career and job depository, and then you can also search for funding from the Mendeley database. So now we go into using Mendeley as a reference manager. And as a reference manager, there are these three core functions that you can do with your Mendeley. First being that you can add or load up your documents, you organize your library, and then you can use it to insert citations and bibliography. But first and foremost, you need to have a Mendeley account and you can do this by going to the Mendeley website you sign up your free account and after opening your free account, you can then download the Mendeley desktop application. After downloading and setting up your application, you have various options by which you can populate your library with your documents or references and the options can be accessed from your file menu. And when you go to your file menu from your Mendeley desktop application, you see these various options. So you can add individual files from a folder or you can add a whole folder. Another feature is for you to select a folder from your computer to watch. 
And by this, what I mean is that anytime you save any document into this folder, Mendeley automatically will upload this document to your library. You can also manually enter the particulars of a reference if need be. There's also an import feature which allows you to import the library of other reference managers in the event that you are probably migrating from EndNote or Zotero. You can import the whole of this library using uh, the import feature. Another tool for you to add documents for, to your Mendeley library is the Mendeley Web Importer. The Web Importer is an um, add-on that you can install. So there are add-ons available for the Chrome browser, Firefox, Safari, and Internet Explorer. So when you add this, uh, you install this add-on, it gives you the uh, opportunity to easily upload any document from your browsing. So assuming you're browsing and you see any reference, if you click on your Mendeley add-on button, it uh, sort of scouts the screen for any reference, gives you the information and then offers you the opportunity to save. And when you click on save, the reference is automatically saved to your library. Another way to save documents to your library is through the Mendeley Suggest. These are suggestions that Mendeley offers based on its uh, advanced machine learning tool. And so when you have these suggestions and you are interested in saving any of these uh, references, you just click on add to library and then this reference will be duly saved to your library. I would want to mention one important thing that you need to do anytime you make changes to your Mendeley library, whether through the web importer or the Mendeley desktop app, you need to click on the sync button. And what the sync button does is that it moves any changes you've done to the cloud and also brings down any changes that is in the cloud to your devices. So this way you're able to assess all your references on any device that you have Mendeley installed on. Now I'll just talk about how to organize your library. Uh, Mendeley by default comes with some form of organization of your documents. So you would see from here that you have a folder known as all documents, recently added, recently read, favorites. And by favorites, these are documents that you will indicate. So when you start them, Mendeley considers them as your favorite and then saves all of them there. Uh, documents that you are yet to review are also placed in this folder known as needs review. But then you also have the opportunity to create your own folder. So assuming you are working on various research topics, you can have folders for each of them and then you are able to save the individual references in this folder. So that's for organizing your library. Now I'll move on to uh, using Mendeley to cite when you are writing up. But to enable you do this citation, you first need to install your MS Word plugin. If you are using the Microsoft Word or the LibreOffice software, you need to install the plugin and you can access this by going to tools on your Mendeley desktop application. So you just follow through the steps and then you install your plugin. So with your plugin installed, you should see a tab like this on your web processor. And so if you're writing and you need to insert any citation, you click on citation and you have this dialog box opening for you. Then what you do is you could start typing um, title or any keyword so when the reference shows up, you click on it 
and then say okay and it gets cited another option is to click on go to mendeley and then it opens your library for you then you can search the document of interest to cite and if you're finally done writing say your paragraph or your chapter and you want to compile your bibliography mendeley does this for you easily in that same Mendeley reference uh, tab or ribbon, you just go to click on insert bibliography and you have a compilation of all the documents that you cited neatly arranged for you. Now I'll talk about using Mendeley as a social network. So with your Mendeley online account, you have the opportunity to create your research profile. And just like any of our social network profiles we have, you can put in your photo, your institution affiliations, and you get the opportunity to see other people's profile and then be able to connect with them. You also are able to track the progress of your work. So you can have your citations, uh, people who have read your work will be shown in your profile. You can provide a brief introduction about yourself, which will be a good way to get people to know what you're doing. In addition, you can upload your work or your publication, which others can easily access via your profile. Another feature with your Mendeley account as a social network is that you can create groups. So if you have interest groups in your field, you can create groups and invite other people to join this group for probably a more focused discussion or for collaboration purposes. So with Mendeley groups, you can see other groups, create other groups and browse the uh, network or the Mendeley interface for other groups that you can join. So there are two kinds of group. There's the public groups and then the private groups. With the public groups, anyone can join, but with private groups, you need to be invited by the group owner or by the group administrator. And the Wonderful thing with private groups is that it gives you the ability to share full text documents and also to make annotations. And there is a, a cool color coding feature which anyone who is um, contributing or making an annotation will be indicated. So this feature, you can collaborate with many people from all over the world at the same time using the private groups feature of uh, Mendeley. So now I'll just finish up with uh, a mention of some of my favorite features that um, over the years. The first one is the personalized Mendeley suggestions. And as I mentioned earlier, it's built on the advanced machine learning tool. So based on your browsing, of articles and what you have in your library, Mendeley is able to scout the internet for similar articles for you and shows you this in your account. Similarly, you can also an alert system. So you get uh, weekly notifications in your email with a compilation of these suggestions. My second favorite is the cloud storage feature. This gives me convenient access to my library on any of the devices since uh, anytime you save, when you sync, it gets uploaded in the, in the cloud. So I could leave my desktop computer in the office, come home and still access my library on my laptop or my phone. Last but not least is the web importer feature. And this for me gives, me the ability to save time whilst I'm importing and it's efficient because you are able to just, Mendeley is able to just pick up the references for you. With a web importer, you're also able to 
import web pages. So sometimes you find that you need to reference web pages. Mendeley is able to pick the information of these web pages and store them in your library for you to use in the future. So this brings to an end um, my brief introduction to you about the Mendeley software. I hope you find it helpful and we are available to take your questions. So um, I really wanted to thank uh, Isaac for uh, such a very good and brief uh, presentation on uh, Mendeley and how we can use uh, Mendeley. As I've mentioned, my name is Ahmed Helmi. I'm the Engineering uh, Solutions Manager for uh, Africa. I am responsible for all the Elsevier Engineering Solutions and Geoscience Solutions directed to help and support uh, companies with engineering departments and engineering and design activities or uh, universities with, for the faculties and schools of engineering and the faculties of, of science and the departments of earth science, mining and oil and gas. Um, for today, we of course, I hope that everybody that is listening is uh, safe and, and sound during this uh, uh, very tiring and very trying times uh, where uh, we are all um, adhering to such very strict rules of social distancing and staying at home and a lot of us are on lockdown and cannot uh, go uh, to our workplace or to our uh, uh, university. So I hope that everybody uh, here is uh, uh, feeling safe and sound and that your loved ones are, are safe. So there is a lot of work uh, to be done uh, by us all, whether you are an engineer in the field or uh, you are uh, um, um, an engineering researcher or your student, there is a lot of things to be done uh, to complete our work, to complete our projects, uh, to complete uh, our research. And also there's a, a huge uh, amount of engineering that is needed right now in the process that everybody is helping out in combating uh, either the virus itself, uh, supporting the health uh, uh, systems and supporting uh, our health workers, or uh, at least adapting uh, to what comes next and what comes uh, next out of uh, this pandemic and this uh, uh, peculiar time uh, in our lives. So right now, uh, we are all uh, either thinking of how to support uh, all the different health workers uh, or uh, how can we or how can we adapt uh, to what's uh, going on after this uh, period ends. And uh, for this webinar, I will try to uh, take you through Engineering Village and Novel, asking the same questions whether you're an engineer on a production line and you need to be very careful with the health and safety uh, of your workers, uh, or you're an engineer that needs to re-modify a production line to start producing uh, PPE and safety uh, gear for the healthcare workers, or you need to start and repurpose your production line to produce masks, or um, any of those questions that we are all asking ourselves right now, how can we be of help and how as engineers and applied scientists we uh, can be of help. So let me start by introducing what is Engineering Village. Uh, Engineering Village is an engineering research tool that provides quality content, analytics, and intelligence that is needed for engineers to improve their research success. Now, the idea here is that we've started building uh, abstract and indexing platforms that host different databases and uh, that would, through using these different databases, you can find the research or the publication that you would like. But as time goes by, the needs have evolved and the needs have become more complicated. You don't know, you no longer just need to find the right paper to read or the right author to follow. You also need to analyze the trends, to understand the difference between the research topics and subject areas, to compare between technologies, uh, whether the world of research and the world of innovation is going this direction or that direction. Um, um, for instance, there was a very big example in the early 2000s when everybody was thinking of the next 3G uh, uh, wave or third generation in telecommunication, uh, where it's going to be uh, uh, WiMAX or LTE. 
And if you analyze the trends where uh, companies were putting their money into research and universities focus on the research and the research trends, you can identify very easily that the world were going to be adopting LTE technology for the 3G. Now, uh, for that purposes, we can look and analyze different trends. We can uh, look at different uh, and analyze all these different um, uh, all these different trends and all these different uh, uh, ideas in understanding what comes next and uh, how which subject area should be we uh, should we be as researchers focusing on uh, for the next period and uh, which uh, technology should we be thinking of employing in our company or in our uh, next uh, project as engineers in the field. So. Engineering Village basically helps you analyze the trends, identify the unique research or the unique publication that you need to compare your work, generate new ideas and uh, build your background on uh, topics that um, is very necessary for you uh, to understand very quickly. Also to identify peers and collaborators and track the competition. Another level is that you want to avoid the noise. There's too much information out there. There is a lot of fake information out there, a lot of uh, unimportant information and a lot of low quality information. So it is not only the purpose or the question of access to information anymore. It is a question of reliability. How can I be uh, confident that I am fully aware of all the comprehensive data out there? and I am being presented with the most perfect and the most brilliant uh, solution for my problem, or at least I'm starting where everybody else has ended. You want to uh, be focused, that you don't, want, you don't want to miss content, you don't want to duplicate your efforts, and you don't want to waste your time for reading irrelevant content because everybody, either you're an engineer in the field or a researcher uh, in the university, um, um, time has become so scarce and you've been pushed to produce results and the deadlines have become uh, very crazy and competitive. So as I said, Engineering Village is a platform and as a platform it hosts more than 12 databases and each database focus on a subject area or a kind of uh, comprehensive overview of a field. So, of course, we've got our flagships like Compendix and NSPEC. We're focusing on all the different engineering subject areas, all the different engineering uh, research standards, um, uh, conferences, papers, publications, even trade magazines, covering all engineering related subject areas and uh, subject areas of interest to uh, engineers, geoscientists, and applied scientists. Even if it comes from a social uh, uh, perspective, but it is a needed information, for instance, for urban planning uh, as engineers or for civil engineering as, as engineers. It will be included and focus on it in AI companions. Uh, we've got also GeoBase and GeoRef, which are uh, the most brilliant uh, databases for uh, geological and geophysical uh, uh, publications and research out there. Uh, Chemica, when it focuses on chemical engineering and chemistry research, Encompass Lit and Encompass Pat, which are focusing on oil and gas industry and oil and gas patents and technology. And of course, we've got a full database for all the patents out there from the US patent database, the uh, European patent database, and the world patent database, uh, all under AI patents. We are very lucky that Engineering Village has been recognized as the leading abstract and indexing research platform out there as it has taken um, a 4.5 star review for content on the Charleston Advisor. And we've also been awarded uh, the 2018 Cody Awards uh, for best content search, discovery and analytics, um, recognizing Engineering Village as the leading platform when it comes uh, to research discovery. Now, as history goes, everybody was more concerned about journals and then started uh, looking more at conference proceedings and, uh, of course, following up with trade magazines. But as we evolve, we found that engineers and in the field and in the study room are all also looking at different data points that are hidden within dissertations. Uh, they are in, uh, looking all the time to find unique standards that represent the information that they need uh, so that to follow when they're designing and of course the different book chapters 
that would help give them some background on the most pressing topics that they are researching or looking into. Also, when it comes to journals versus conference papers and conference proceedings, we found that from uh, the 1970s to the 2013, there was uh, more focus on journals. But as we started from 2014, noticing that there are a, a bigger reliability on conference proceedings and conference papers, as engineers are pressing, are being pressed uh, to produce more innovations, and as the uh, new technologies and new innovations uh, have a shorter uh, publication cycle view conferences. We found that companies and technology uh, uh, publishers are more focusing on uh, producing their work uh, competitively due, uh, through conferences. Uh, so right now we are indexing more and more peer-reviewed uh, engineering and applied science conferences. And we found that the content uh, represented within the different publications that we index is uh, increasing by uh, f um, um, a huge number. Now it is about 54% uh, journals to 46% uh, percent of uh, publications coming out of conferences. Now, this is a very important slide uh, uh, to stop by. And it, it, it gives you a little bit of insights of how these uh, databases and platforms work. Now, if you're doing any kind of search, whether you're doing a, a web search on a genetic uh, search engine as if it's uh, Google or you're doing on a, a database, most likely what you're doing is what we call uh, keyword search or word or text search. So what that means is that it takes the text of the keyword that you've put and it compares it to millions of documents and PDFs that it have uh, uh, scanned with its web spiders and it just it brings up the results according to um, how many times the text that you've put in the keyword is um, repeated in that PDF, or if the author have designated as a keyword uh, for, for its discovery. What we do with Engineering Village and EI Compendix in particular is a bit different, as it is designed for engineering purposes and it is uh, managed by engineers and engineering subject area experts. Uh, it, it is done from the perspective of an engineering database and data points. So what we do, whenever there is a full text context um, that is uh, published or it is even approved uh, to be published, we go through the full text of that article or that document or that chapter and we start classifying all the different engineering and applied science topics within that document uh, with what we call data points. And we start assigning all of these different data points with controlled and non-controlled terms to identify the subject area and to designate the subject area that they're covering. Whether they're covering various subject areas, we start ranking them by relevance and by importance. So if you're searching at any time with a keyword, Engineering Village will understand the subject area that you're looking for and it will bring out only the relevant data to that subject uh, area. Even if it was written in different texts, in different languages, it will understand it by the jargon and by the subject area that you need to look at. So we run the document against 11,000 handwritten rules and we start assigning the preferred and non-preferred terms. We segment all of these papers and then we do a lot of quality control. So every Friday we upload now more than 29,000 new documents uh, and records to uh, engineering village, which means that every Friday evening you can, if you have an alert, you will be alerted to the new publications out there, whether it's a uh, journal or a conference uh, paper or a uh, new standard uh, or a standard modification that happened for the topic of your interest. And it will give you the most updated results, which means that it will also not only cover published uh, documents, it will also um, cover documents that are still in publication. So once uh, they get the approval to be published, it will be indexed on EI Compendix up to three months ahead from the publication date. Just to ensure that you are up to date into your field, understand who you can collaborate with and track the competition. Ahmed, can I yes. please ask a question? It's from Mohammed. He sure. wants to know if it's useful to use in architecture science. Yes, um, Engineering Village and EI Compendix also covers architecture. 
uh, a novel which we're going to be uh, focused uh, more in the second half of this presentation. It will be mo more focused on uh, civil engineering and some architecture concepts that are related to engineering and civil engineering. But with engineering village, yes, uh, architecture is, and environmental engineering and all urban planning, all of this is covered in the ICO panels. Okay, thanks. So as I said, um, if we take an example of one of the databases that are on EI Compendix, uh, you'll find that it covers uh, um, very comprehensively a lot, even more than 190 engineering disciplines, and it covers publications coming out of uh, more than 2,500 different engineering uh, uh, publishers. So Elsevier is only one publisher out of 2,500 different publishers that are indexed on EI Compendix, which means you have a full overview of all the different engineering topics that and publications have. Also, uh, the standards, we are the only database and platform that is indexing all the engineering standards out there, whether it's IEEE, ASTM, uh, ASCE, I, uh, AIEA, or the ISO. All of these different uh, um, standards are fully indexed on uh, engineering village. And now the idea here, for instance, if you're an engineer right now in the field and you're looking to repurpose a production line to start producing, let's say, uh, new uh, protective masks uh, for health workers, you need to find out the right standard that you need to follow when producing such new products. So this is a good place to start and this is a good place that directs you directly to the standard that you need to freshen up on and follow. In, in your new purposing of, of that production line. So you'll find the full records. Uh, again, it's an abstracted indexing platform, not the full text of uh, the standard or the document that you're looking for, but you will find that it can direct you directly to the publisher's page for that particular standards that complies with your question. On Engineering Village and EI Compendix, you'll also find the full history of that standard, whether um, the active and inactive uh, uh, versions of that standard, and it will designate to you which of them are active and which of them are inactive, so you can track the progress and the history of that standard if you're evaluating an old project, for instance, that followed a earl an earlier active standard. Uh, we have a few more questions, if I can interject. Of course. Um, so, a lot of students are asking if they can access it on their own if the university doesn't subscribe to um, Engineering Village. That's the first question. Um, mm -hmm. And the second one in, in relation to that is, is Engineering Village available for Moroccan students? Okay, I understand. So um, I will cover this thoroughly um, as, as we go on by the end uh, on, on access. But in general, as a general concept, uh, all of the different uh, um, subscription-based uh, uh, platform from Elsevier are institutional subscriptions. Um, so uh, they are not for individual subscriptions. They are uh, available when the institution uh, subscribes and uh, decides to give access to their students and researchers uh, access to that. Um, across Africa, there are uh, hundreds of different universities that give access to uh, their students for Engineering Village and the Elsevier Engineering Solutions in general. Um, so of course, a lot of them are in North Africa, some of them are in uh, Morocco. Um, uh, I don't have uh, the full list right now of which universities uh, that are uh, that have access to Engineering Village uh, in Morocco, but uh, if you are interested uh, and you have um, um, a, an understanding of uh, that you would need access to Engineering Village, maybe you can ask your administrator if, uh, or uh, check your library catalog um, if uh, you guys have access to Engineering Village or not. Uh, also, if you need any more information uh, to share with your admin, if you don't have uh, currently access um, to Engineering Village, so that they would evaluate um, 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 all the different engineering solutions, we're very happy to provide that. Um, on a different note, as support uh, to a lot of our partners, uh, partner universities across uh, Africa, uh, right now with the efforts to uh, combat COVID-19 and its repercussions, 
Um, upon request from different departments and different institutions, uh, we are temporarily opening uh, some of our solutions uh, like EV or Novel to them, uh, whether there is a, a research need uh, towards COVID-19 activities uh, and, um, or, uh, and, and uh, um, a need for to complete a project very fast to support these efforts. We're very happy to communicate with that, but it has to be done through the admin of that university because we open it by IP range and this is something that only the admin of the university can uh, give uh, us um, and request that so we can open it for them temporarily to support this kind of efforts. Um, is there any other questions, uh, Denishree, or should I go on? Yes, there are, actually. Um, so just your, your answer is they need to check with their library subscription. If they don't have access, they need to contact their librarian or administrator to try and um, obtain access to this product. Um, they want to know how can a journal be made indexed to um, Engineering Village? Um, I think, yeah, if you could. Okay, um, so can you repeat the last question? They want to know how, how can a journal be indexed in Engineering Village? Okay, perfect. Um, so, the, how, how can be a journal can be indexed on Engineering Village? Uh, this is very easy. You can, and I will show you uh, where to go on Engineering Village. There is a recommendation uh, uh, page uh, where you can recommend different conferences and different, uh, different conferences and, and different journals to be indexed. I, I will show that during the live demo. Um, so you can directly send us uh, your recommendation of the different journals that you think we should index. But I would uh, really advise you to be very careful in what you advise because we are very thorough and we are very strict on what we index on, uh, on, the qual on a quality basis on Engineering Village. So out of quality, if, there is, if it's not peer reviewed or in, if it's low quality or it's irregularity when it's uh, publication dates, uh, you might be rejected and then you'll be put on a, a two year notice until you can be reevaluated again. Um, if you uh, would like to recommend something, please email me and uh, we can, I can send you the different uh, metrics that we look at. So you can thoroughly compare these metrics uh, to your publication that you want to recommend. And then you can uh, uh, index, uh, you can um, ask it for it to be reviewed to be indexed. Uh, the other part is, um, I, I've seen a question on the standards. I apologize that, uh, I forgot to uh, remove the coming soon uh, part. All of these standards on the screen right now are fully indexed on Engineering Village. Um, um, they are all indexed, uh, BSI, ISO. Um, they are in, this is an old, uh, I, I should have remo removed the coming soon uh, 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 logo from some of them. Yeah, is there any other questions, Andrew? Sorry, not for now, thanks. You've answered all of them. Okay, so also another thing that we index on, on Engineering Village are all the different engineering and uh, applied science uh, books so that you can uh, discover. I've also um, seen a, a question in the Q&A about uh, access to standards uh, and standards are expensive. Now, yes, standards are expensive. And if you full the, and if you try to buy the full uh, version of these standards, it will be very very expensive. Either you're an, as an individual or as an institution. So what you see here is not the full text of these standards, as I mentioned. It is the abstract of these standards. But if you're looking for a specific design or a specific uh, problem that you want to solve and you want to be familiar with its standards, this allows you to choose only the standards that uh, from the full uh, 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 standard uh, series that you need to have or you need to buy, which is much, much cheaper if you only buy that particular standards for um, the design that you're looking for, uh, rather than just buying the full uh, text and the full version of the standard and then um, going through it for just one standard that actually applies uh, to your design problem. Okay. Um, another thing that has become extremely important uh, for all the different engineers and researchers out there is how to differentiate between 
uh, different research papers that are covering uh, the same uh, topic, but, but have significant difference hidden between them. Uh, let me give you an example. Um, there is a very famous example that is um, uh, very evident in the oil and gas industry and uh, when it comes to drilling. Uh, when we're talking about, for instance, uh, wells and oil wells, and we're talking about deep well uh, drilling, um, it has changed over the, the, the meaning of the word deep well has actually changed throughout the years. A lot of engineers think that, the, uh, that this is a common um, 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 a wording or a common understanding between all engineers what specifies to be a deep well. Now, let's say for instance, for example, and I'm an electrical engineer, I'm not an oil and gas engineer, so I might get this a little bit wrong. So let's say for instance, 10 years ago, a deep well would be a thousand or 3000 uh, uh, meters deep. Now we're talking uh, more than 7,000 uh, uh, meters deep, for instance. Um, now, if you're looking with the word deep well, you'll get a mix between different papers and different uh, publications that are talking about totally different wells, uh, according to the understanding of the author of the meaning of the term deep well. Now, what we've done is that we have went through all of the, our papers and we started uh, indexing all the physical properties uh, numerically and all the different numbers within these different papers. So you can actually filter out and differentiate between different papers numerically uh, by comparing uh, heat, temperature, length, depth, frequency, all the different important physical properties. So for instance, if you're uh, testing uh, or you're looking for somebody that is publishing something about uh, testing uh, an IC, for instance, uh, and you wanted to differentiate between the same, the same test between um, um, 10,000 hours or 1,000 hours, and you just wanted something that is in between. You can actually specify a range for how many hours of testing for fatigue uh, that you want to actually see. And it will eliminate anything above or under that range numerically that you, know, you have uh, uh, specified. Another thing is actually looking by the chemical material and the chemical formula. We, you can also search on the I Compendix and on Engineering Village using the chemical uh, uh, formula of a chemical compound. The first thing that you'll see on Engineering Village that is giving me a list of all the different databases that are available on Engineering Village. And I can pick and choose which one of them that I, I'll be using for today. I can use all of them or I can use a particular one. So for today, I'm going to use the I Compendix. And now the second thing that I want you to see is the different search options. So you have a quick search, an expert search, and a Sephora search. So the quick search is the normal one that we're gonna be using for now. The Sephora search is a very good tool for you to actually utilize all the data points that we've discussed and that we've mentioned before in how to find and pinpoint the data that you want or actually explore a new subject and a new topic for yourself. And the expert search, uh, I'm going to cover it briefly, but it is uh, for uh, those out of you that um, prefer to write their own search codes. Uh, we also allow you to, uh, to learn or to use um, uh, search codes uh, when you're searching as well. Now, I'm going to be using the quick search. And the uh, second thing that I'm going to specify is whatever I'm going to put, be putting on that search box. Uh, I need to understand if I'm looking between the different subjects and titles, abstracts, authors, I'm looking for author affiliations, uh, I'm using the EI uh, classification codes, uh, or I'm even looking for uh, funding, uh, 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 funding sponsors. And, and that is correct because EV even covers the funding institutions uh, funding the different research results that we find on EV. So you can actually identify uh, authors, identify articles, journals, and even funding opportunities and funding sponsors for that particular field if you're looking for funding for your own uh, uh, research. Now, again, one of the very important uh, topics right now any engineer is, is going to be looking at is health and safety and environment. Um, if you're an engineering student or if you're uh, an engineering uh, researcher, 
okay? Or if you are an engineer in a factory. One of the main topics that everybody needs to actually look at right now is and they need to look at um, health and safety uh, in the environment, uh, all the different changes in the health and safety uh, plans uh, that we are employing right now to include how can we integrate our workers again in the workplace with a pandemic going on or right after the pandemic with the fear of um, a phase two or a wave two that may come at any point. So every engineer right now, whether you are is still going to work or you're still preparing to go to work after the lockdown ends, you need to be started thinking of employing new techniques and updating the, your health and safety and environment plans in on the plant and research if you're a researcher new uh, methodologies new technologies to enable uh, people uh, uh, to do so so i've just written hse which is of course um, an abbreviation for health safety and environment and right away it understood what i'm looking for and it brought me all the different publications out there that are looking for health and safety uh, uh, engineering. Another thing is that it wants to narrow down my search, whether it's through risk assessment or accident prevention, offshore whale production, petroleum prospecting, or safety engineering. So it's suggesting a narrower uh, um, uh, search term so that I can be uh, closer and closer to what I need to read rather than having more than 7,000 uh, records to go through. Now, I wanted to keep it general in the, in the beginning because I've talked a lot about trends and about different technologies and options between different technologies. And, and this is where I want to demonstrate how you can do that. So under health and safety and environment, if I want to understand the and the trend that is uh, for, uh, for uh, health and safety uh, engineering, um, I would like to actually look on the different different trends that are year on year. So if I go onto these refined facets on the left hand side, and I go and look at the different publications by year. So if I expand this point, you'll find that I can have a full list of the different years for that publications back to 1968. Or I can look at the same numbers as a graph. Now, if I look at this graph, I'll find that year on year, trends and the need and the push for publications on health and safety and environment is exploding. It's increasing year on year. And you can also find a little bit of spikes on, on different years, or like, let's say 2014. And I would say that 2020 and 2021, we're going to see an even bigger spike on publications uh, towards health and safety. So there is, I can analyze from this that there is a quite a need on, uh, uh, on pushing uh, 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 for publications and new innovations and new research on, on health and safety. Now, another thing that I would like to look at is who is funding this research. So I can actually look also at a graph for all the different institutions that are funding this research and how many papers are they funding. Now, the good thing about this graph is that I can download these metrics, I can download these graphs, I can download them as Excel, I can download them as a graph, I can download them as a PDF. But the second best thing is that I actually can click on any of them and it will narrow down my search results to that particular area. So right now, I am looking at this, the 491, um, um, uh, 491 papers that were funded uh, by the health and safety executive under health and safety. So I'm only looking at these papers that they have funded. So what else I can do with this? One of the most important parts is who should I read for? Who are the thought leaders in the world right now on health and safety? So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to limit my search results for those four years from 2017 till 2020. So I'm, li I'm limiting 
my view of only of the publications within these four years. So I've done, I've decreased from 7,000 something to 8,500 something uh, record. Now, the second thing that I want to look at is I want to look at it by country. So for those four years, if I compare between countries, who are the ones that are publishing the most in health and safety? United States, the UK, and China would have been the most uh, likable uh, and the most uh, viable answers. But we find out that, for instance, that Russia is nearly publishing nearly a double what the United States are, is publishing right now when it comes to health and safety engineering for the, in, in the past four years, which means that I cannot dismiss uh, all these different Russian publications. And I can only, and not only limit myself to focus on the US or UK publications. Um, another thing that I would like to look at is by language. So if I look at the different languages that these publications are published in, I can find that there are, of course, mostly English, but there's about 32 publications in Russian, about two publications in Chinese and one in Spanish. So I'm gonna limit my search results to only English language research. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to try and look at who should I read for. So this is a whole list of all the different authors that are publishing right now in health and safety engineering. And you can find them by name. And I, if I click on any of those bars, it will, for instance, take me uh, to the 13 uh, publications uh, by uh, Ilya Makarov to actually look at exactly what this guy was publishing at for the, post, for the past four years and compare if it's something relevant to what I'm looking for. And if it is, I can basically create an alert for uh, Ilya Makarov and every time he publishes a new article, I will get notified uh, by the topic and by the abstract of that article. So after looking at the different authors and the different thought leaders in health and safety engineering right now. I would like also to see how many of these publications are published in a conference and how many of these publications are actually published in a journal. And as I said, a lot of engineers and researchers right now are publishing more and more in conferences as the publishing cycle is uh, much shorter. And it is also has become peer reviewed. So it's also very well recognized during the research community. So as if you see on conference articles, there is a more about 849 uh, papers that has been published for the past four years and only 516 in journal articles. So if, for instance, I want to understand uh, which of the scientific journals are most likely to accept my paper, and I want to build, to build a strategy, for instance, if I'm publishing an article, on which uh, scientific journals should I approach uh, when I'm publishing my engineering article on health and safety. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to limit my search results only to journal articles and to articles in press, in press. And as you can see, for instance, here in the list, there are seven standards that I can also check uh, that are regarding health and safety. I'm, I'm gonna look at that later. But I'm gonna limit my search results to journals, journal article and articles in press. So I've limited that. Now I have only about 529 articles, which are, again, articles that have already been published or articles in press, which means that I have about 13 articles that have not yet been published, but are still indexed on EV, which means that I am really up to date with whatever has been published in a peer-reviewed scientific journal out there on health and safety engineering and environment. Now, to look at after I've limited that to only articles, I will go to the source title, which basically will give me a list of all the different scientific journals that are publishing in health and safety engineering. Now, for this, this is extremely uh, relevant. So I can actually click on any of those scientific journals and look at the 10 different articles that they've published and compare what they have published to my topic, 
to compare, okay, are they publishing exactly what I'm looking for or they have already published something that I'm covering. So if I send them my article, they will feel that the editor will feel that they've already covered that topic. They, they don't want to revisit it again. So they will bypass me or reject my paper. You can understand the trend of each of those scientific journals and identify the one that is most likely uh, to publish your article because you are completing on a point of interest that they've already been publishing on. Again, this is very important for you not to be stuck with only uh, the top one or two or three articles in your uh, uh, journals uh, in your field and to identify very reputable, very uh, uh, good other journals that can have maybe a shorter cycle of approval uh, for your article to be published. Can we take two questions? Of course. While we're on this point. Yes. Okay, we have a question from Kevin Puresh who asks if you could pre please briefly discuss the difference between engineering village and Scopus. Do the applications vary? That's the first question. Yes. Okay, so that answer is, I was actually going to tackle right away right now. So they work together very, very, uh, very well. Now the idea here, we are very data centric and I'm gonna show you a little bit how we can dive deeper into the data and into the topic itself. And Scopus uh, looks a lot, and Dentistry, of course, can, can add much more on, on, on how Scopus works uh, to me, uh, to, to what I'm saying. Um, on the itch index, the science core, all of these different metrics that are uh, evaluating the authors and evaluating uh, the journals and ranking of that journals within uh, its peers. So what you're doing here on Engineering Village is um, now having an overview of the trend. And then when you dive deeper into the topic, you'll find any hidden data, whether it's a number, it's an equation, it's a data sheet, whatever is hidden within a dissertation, a standard, um, and um, a conference paper, um, all of these things will be covered here. And then you can look at the ranking of that journal or uh, the profile of that author uh, between the author profile on Engineering Village and the uh, author profile on Scopus as well, which will have their H index, will have their the science score, will have all the different metrics that you can use to also to evaluate and rank um, all of these uh, 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 different authors and different articles. Now, the, the other part here, which I'm gonna go uh, through in later when we dive deeper into the topics is the data points. So as Scopus covers more than uh, 5,000 different publishers from all different fields, which is engineering, um, philosophy, law, uh, medical, uh, medicine and medical uh, uh, research, so it does not have the luxury of diving deeper into topic analysis from a perspective of an engineer. Now with Engineering Village, as we're only focused on applied sciences and engineering, we have what we've described before as the data points and the engineering thesaurus. So if I go here to the controlled vocabulary and I can actually dive deeper into what I'm looking for within the uh, health, safety, uh, and environment. And the other thing is I can include standards in, in my search. Uh, Scopus does not index standards. Uh, also, Engineering Village has a much higher uh, uh, focus on conferences and conference uh, papers. Uh, and also it has the numerical indexing and the chemical formula indexing uh, and filtration, which is not included also in, on, on Scopus. Um, I'm going to add more to that answer as we go on when I go to the thesaurus search, uh, which is uh, the most powerful tool that you can find on Engineering Village as well, that is also unique uh, to AI Compendix and Engineering Village. Um, then, Shri, do, is there any other questions that you want me to answer now? Yes, please. Uh, from Chantal Panfieren, what if the database only contains Compendix and no others? Um, that was she's talking about under engineering village database. And the last question is, if you could explain the advantage of a conference article above a journal article, that question from Johan Hanekom. Okay, so um, 
it, I, again, of course, it is uh, um, according to your university's decision or uh, institutions or companies' decision which database uh, that it wants its users to have access to. Um, so if you are an engineer, uh, AI Compendix is more than enough. Uh, maybe also if we include NSPEC, then you'll have a complete uh, coverage also of physics and um, uh, also uh, um, computer science and, and a little bit more of electrical engineering, but it is mostly already covered on AI Compendix. Um, the, if you are a geoscientist, Engineering Village will cover a lot of the topics of your interest but it will cover it from the parts that are correlated uh, with the engineering field or the engineering perspective. So when it comes, for instance, for um, economical geology or uh, geography uh, publications, maybe you will need uh, to ask for access to GeoRef and GeoBase. Um, if you're a chemist, also uh, AI Compendix will cover a lot of very good uh, and interesting topics for you, but again, um, largely on things that are also interesting uh, from a chemical engineering point of view, but still, still uh, comprehensive enough. Uh, but maybe you'd be also uh, in need of adding or asking for access for Chemica, which is uh, a more dedicated to chemical uh, uh, research and chemical papers. Now, um, that is um, a, a brief understanding of what you need. If, for instance, you're looking more onto uh, patents, uh, patents are highly covered into uh, AI patents, uh, which I've described as a separate database for patents from uh, all over the world. Um, now, on the difference between conferences, uh, conference papers and journal papers, um, I think, Danishri, you can also add um, on, uh, or answer a bit of that question. Uh, you're a much better expert uh, on, on this than I am. Uh, but for my limited understanding, um, for an engineer, there is a high competitiveness uh, when it comes to uh, publishing, and especially when you're competing uh, with a lot of other uh, engineers on introducing or proving new technologies and presenting re results and applications on technologies. The uh, shorter iteration of uh, a conference publication is maybe more suitable for all of these new breakthroughs in technology. But of course, a scientific journal will have you a much deeper coverage and a much deeper understanding of a topic, and it gives you much more um, uh, in-depth information uh, and a validity of, of uh, what has been published uh, um, uh, on a conference paper. We're seeing the relevance of conference paper increasing as more and more conferences are peer reviewed. And we have also taken up uh, it up ourselves in the AI Compendix and we're mainly indexing peer reviewed uh, 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 conferences right now and conference articles. Uh, we're moving away from uh, non peer reviewed uh, conference papers, which again gives a lot more uh, validity uh, to these publications. But of course, a journal. Although it takes a year or a year and a half to publish, which sometimes uh, when it comes to technology, it makes it less relevant, but makes it much more credible, of course. Uh, Danishri, if you want to add anything to my answer or if... Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I would agree completely with yeah. your answer. And just to add that uh, there are two different types of content. It would depend on what you're looking for. To keep more up to date with trends and um, in that sense, I would say conference proceedings, but for journal articles, as you explained, it's more niche, it's more focused, um, and it is also the latest research um, that's being made available in, in the form of an article. So it's, it's entirely up to, to you, which you would prefer to use. Um, I saw another uh, question in the Q&A that um, I would like to answer on two different uh, uh, parts. Um, yes, we cover uh, composites and we cover um, um, all of these different uh, material uh, on, on uh, EV, but again, that's directing you to the abstract of a paper that has a full coverage on that. But a much useful tool, a much, much more useful tool would be Novel, as it has a dedicated material property search. So um, if you allow me, I will speed up a little bit in, in my presentation to finish on Engineering Village so I can have time to start with Novel and showcase again some of its uh, unique tools uh, when it comes to material science and to material engineering and, and, and composites. Now, if, if I go back um, um, to, to my uh, search, 
Uh, one thing uh, I just wanted to point out, what you see here in this box is the code for the expert search of what we have been looking for. As you can see, this is the expert search, and you can see here all the different code. So if you're familiar with that code or you want to learn your code, what we've done through different filters on this side, you can actually type it directly here and, and you'll have uh, similar results. Uh, um, also, the other point that you would like to know is that you can directly just click here and create an alert, or you can save your search, or you can share uh, your search as well. Um, um, if you look at, uh, for instance, if I created an alert here, it will appear, appear right away because I'm signed in, into my list of uh, different alerts where I can rename them by projects or leave them as the search string. Um, I can also uh, open them and close them. Uh, so if I don't want to receive the emails, I can simply uh, close them. And if I am back from a holiday and I want to see everything that I've missed, for instance, I can just open them again. And it will ask me, do you only want to find research publication or do you want me to send all the different publications? I can actually choose between both. Now, if I go back to my search and on, on a particular uh, case of COVID-19, I want to do two particular searches that would show some relevance. So we've searched on health and safety. We can also search on pandemic. And then as you can see, it is giving me uh, more related things to viruses, disease, vaccines, disease control, and epidemiology. As I said, there is a lot of biomedical engineering and biomedical uh, research also that is available in index on, on, uh, on EV, on EI Compendix. Uh, also, if you, let's say for instance, um, I want to look at it from an engineering point of view, I will add a search field and I will add health and safety. So it will narrow down my search results to the ones related to pandemic and health and safety. And for instance, I will find here an article that is actually talking about prevention and control of emerging infectious disease outbreaks in a global oil and gas workplace. And it is actually looking at the learned, uh, uh, learned um, um, lessons from controlling um, an, an emergent pandemic in a Nigerian uh, oil rig uh, during the H1N1 uh, uh, pandemic. So you'll find a lot of very relevant information uh, on, on this. So you'll find an the abstract, you'll find the source. If I click on detailed, it will give you the author affiliation, the source title. It is the SPE International Conference. It was published in 2014 and the publisher was SPE. So right now I have the, the abstract, I have the control terms, which are uh, disease control, gas industry, health risks, human resource management. So I can actually look at or click on any of those uh, and, and have a more thorough research, for instance, on, on safety engineers or controlling of infectious disease. And I can actually study more on other papers uh, that would be published on, on controlling uh, uh, infectious disease in, in a workplace. Uh, but this is, for instance, in particular to oil and gas. If this article was relevant, um, I have a list of uh, related documents that are suggested to me, uh, whether uh, it's maintenance and management systems for upstream operations in oil and gas, it's a case study, or uh, another one uh, that is uh, of a, uh, another publication. Um, I can also find the different author details and the author profile. Um, a very good thing on EV is that you can actually find the email of some of the authors. Now, right now, as I said, Engineering Village and Scopus work together uh, very well. So right now I've uh, clicked on uh, the name of the author and it is actually recognizing me that it is giving me the author profile uh, from Scopus. Also, all the citation counts uh, from Scopus 
is also visible on uh, each of the different articles uh, from Engineering Village. Um, I don't think that you see it on my screen right now. So I have opened, if you see, if you see it on my, on my screen right now, I have opened uh, the, the research, uh, uh, the researcher uh, profile uh, from Scopus. Is it, is it visible? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we can see it. Thanks. Okay. Now, if I go back to my search, let's, let's go back to the search itself. Um, I will remove this part. I just want to point out that in the search results, for instance, this article has about 863 citations on Scopus. As you can see, it, we import the citation count from Scopus and it is also visible and available in the search results here on EV. Now, I want to do another thing. I want to do a search by the force. Now, on this particular kind of search, you go to search and go to thesaurus. You're not searching within the search results. You're searching within the vocabulary. It's a very powerful tool if you want to understand more of a topic that you are starting to investigate for um, um, either a new research or a new uh, a situation that you are currently facing. So right now, if I would type in pandemic, oh, let's let's put HSE again. And I'm I'm searching. Let's put it as safety. So right now it has given me 90 matching terms on, on safety. I found accident prevention, active safety systems, alarm systems, automobile windshields, and I can go on and on on the different terms and data points that are available. This is basically me giving you access to the back end where you can manipulate all these data points that we index all of these different uh, 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 papers with and you can manipulate them as you see fit so you can actually um, find out uh, what, what you want to find. So if I go back to the first page and I want to go to um, accident prevention. If I click on accident prevention, it will give me a tree of the broader term, which is safety engineering. Even if I click on safety engineering, it is here on my search box. And then related terms like accidents, uh, disaster, environmental engineering, uh, safety device, safety resistance, uh, a narrower term, which is uh, laser safety, uh, pedestrian safety, mine and roof safety. And I can go and, for instance, click on environmental engineering. Again, now I'm going through environmental engineering as accident prevention, carbon capture, uh, biomedical engineering, clean rooms, all um, ecosystem, earth site, all of these. And I can have all of these different terms and I can create a safety box. Or I can go to a totally different topic, like, as we said, pandemic. I search pandemic or let's virus. Um, okay. So it is also giving me a lot of different uh, microbiology, pathogens, all of these related uh, uh, topics. If I click, for instance, on microorganisms and I, I don't I really understand what's on uh, this one, so I'm just going to re-keep it to safety engineering and microorganisms. And I will click. So rather than going through 7,000 articles and all of those articles, I just typed those two ones and it gave me three, 33 records to start with where 
it can give me here, for instance, uh, all the things that all the papers that are related to safety engineering and, of course, uh, microorganisms. I can do that in totally different ways or until I'm sure that I have what I'm looking for. And let's say, for instance, here disasters. So I will, let's say, click on emergency services with safety engineers, and I will click and. Again, it gave me two important records to look for when it, can, when it came to safety engineering and when it came to emergency services. So again, this is exactly as if you're using a sniper rifle to pinpoint the one or two articles that you actually want to look at to educate yourself on, on a particular topic. And of course, all of these results can be downloaded. All of these abstracts can be downloaded and you can just click and, and it can uh, 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 get, get you to the full text at the publisher level and you will probably have access to it if it's one of your organizational subscriptions. Uh, um, can, can I'm finished with EV. Can, yeah, I'm finished with EV. So if, if there's any other questions on EV before I start to novel, uh, that would be a good time. Yeah. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. Um, how can we insert a paper discovered in Engineering Village into Mendeley Reference Manager? Is there an exportable option on the results in Engineering Village which can export the reference into Mendeley? Yes, from Joseph Dada. Yes, of course. So this is this is the article here, okay, and this is the abstract, and this is all the data around it. And I want to import all of this data to Mendeley. So all I need to do is uh, to click here, and it will give me uh, an option to download uh, the records, and I can choose to download it to Mendeley, and I will ask it to download the record to Mendeley. And let me share my screen. Yeah. I hope that you see the small window that has opened right now that is opening uh, uh, for Mendeley. Is it visible? Yes, we can see it. Okay, so it's loading. Again, I apologize uh, for uh, the low internet, or low speed. Now I can accept and continue uh, signing into Mendeley, and then the record, as you can see here, has already been uh, imported to uh, my Mendeley account, and I can click on that uh, and download other uh, abstracts as well and link them to Mendeley or any other reference manager, of course, um, if I choose to. Thanks. The next question is from Matthias Kanimi. There was a time you had two search bars open at the same time one with HSE and another one with pandemic. How did you do that? So here's an add search field. You can add as many as you like. And you can choose whether it's an and or or. Of course, and is much more specific. And you can choose that each bar, well, are you looking for an author? Let's say, for instance, I'm looking at safety. but I'm also looking for an author that I don't remember his full name. I just remember that his name was John. And I will search. So right now what it will do, it, I hope, uh, yeah, it brought me 11,000 records of papers on safety with authors named John. And as you can see, there's a preview of, of the abstract here in the research, uh, in the search results. And as you can see here, the name of the author is John. So right now I'm searching with two different things. I can do that with titles, standards, everything. Now, um, another search that would be um, um, very interesting uh, 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 to, uh, to show is, um, 
a search for the standards. So there is a particular uh, standard, for instance, that I want to show you. If I go, for instance, to the expert search, uh, I'm going to use the expert search because I don't want to find out a single standard. I want to find out all the relevant standards. So as you can see, these are all um, the different standards that are that we found, for instance, related. And I can I can show you that search. Uh, I can share that search directly with you in the PowerPoint uh, when we upload it uh, uh, to uh, Researcher Academy. This is everything related to uh, COVID nineteen and to the pandemic and to the different. Uh, uh, ASTM uh, standards that are related to uh, testing uh, textiles, uh, if you want to remanufacture masks, if we want to uh, manufacture PPE equipment, all of these ASTM uh, uh, standards are indexed and available on, on EI companies.